What's up guys, back again with another video. So this time I'm going to teach you something magical. It's called the DOM. And the DOM stands for the Document Object Module. And, uh, I mean model. Document Object Model. And um, <clears throat> this is like the makeup of your whole web page, basically. Like what is displayed on the browser screen. And yeah, so it's a little hard to explain, but basically the DOM is like a collection of objects that makes up your web page. And... Each element on your web page, like the title, the head, the body, the h1, the p, the p, the script, you know, all of these, you, you, like just any of these tags, they are converted into its own object. They become objects of their own, and they all hold their own properties and their own methods. So if we want to take a look at that, we could do that easily. Okay, so if you want to look, take a look at that, we can go to our browser here and open up the console with F12. And uh, yeah, so let's check, take a look here. So DOM... Okay, but anyway, um, so if we click on any of these tags, just remember these are all going to be converted into objects here. So anyway, so let's go into our console and then um, it, since it's JavaScript, we can pull up a object easily just by typing it. And the document object is part of the window object. It's like under it. So anyway, just type that in and then enter. And now it'll give you a giant thingy here, which is just your document object model. It's the web page this everything that you're typing here basically so uh yeah so that's how it is in this type of uh it's like in a certain type of form i don't know what it's called but yeah so let's convert this into like a more readable format so we can do document dot all so this will make a, a html collection of all our tags on our page or all our objects so as we can see um it doesn't show the document uh type html doesn't count but it starts at html and um it has an index for each one, so that's useful for accessing them. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, just like that for each one. And so, yeah, it's an HTML collection. It's not an array. It's kind of similar, but you can access it the same way, actually, too. But we'll get into that in a second. So, for example, if you create a P tag right here, another one. Oh, crap, ignore this. So, create another P tag, and then... Give it an ID of test2 if you want to. And then if we reload here, oops, or right, we'll just type it again. Then we can find it. Where is it? P, no, not that one. We don't want that one. Um, huh, let's reload a page. Okay, document.all. Yeah, now, now we have 13. So if we find it right here, here it is. So P, hashtag test2, hashtag is the sign for a um, ID. So there it is right there. And uh, yeah, so we can't do much with this yet, but we'll be able to access these things, these properties and change them and use methods and stuff like that. And yeah, so just don't forget that each element is converted into an object and it has its own properties and methods. But yeah, so yeah. And if you're as confused as I am, um, well, here's a wonderful picture that you can look at. Um, it's an example. So we have the main document object, and then it turns into what's called like a model, basically. I don't know how to explain it, but yeah. And so you have our root element, which is, you know, the overarching HTML tag, which like, what I mean by overarching is that it's like over everything. I hope that's a word. And uh, yeah, so it has its own um, tags inside of it. You know, these elements are tags. And where these attributes are, these are the properties, like the object properties, basically. So you can access these if you want to later on. And even change them, too. And, uh, yeah, you can make these elements disappear. You can make new ones, all kinds of stuff. So, see, as you look down, <clears throat> each uh, element has its own properties. So, yeah, hope that helps you a little bit. So I'll put that um, picture in the description if you want to and all these links I'm about to show you. So, yeah. So here's what the DOM can do for you as a web developer. Uh, it can let you change any of the elements on a web page. It can let you change the attributes, like I just said. Um, you can change the CSS styles too, which is pretty awesome. Um, you can even remove the elements and attributes too if you don't want them. And yeah, so just sit there in a minute for a minute and uh, imagine the possibilities because it's amazing. But yeah, anyway, don't actually sit there for a minute. Um, so to summarize, the DOM is a standard for how to get, change, add, and delete HTML elements. So yeah, I took, I took that quote from this website, <laughs> but yeah. So let's jump right into it. How do we access this DOM here? So like I just showed you, if we do just document, that's an easy way to access it. 
So let's clear the screen. Oops. Oh, I guess that didn't work. Whatever. I'll just reload because I'm lazy. So there we go. So there's a couple of ways to access DOM um, objects in JavaScript, but the main one is by using document.getElementById. So whenever you have an element, you can assign it an ID, of course, by doing, uh, you know, adding the attribute here, ID. So let's access this one, the H1, with the ID of test. So how do we access this? So we can do document.getElementById. By ID. See, look, we have three different options: ID, class name, or tag name. We'll get into the other two later, but this is the main one that developers use. So, if we type in the ID here, test, it will return our tag here, which is awesome. So now we can look at this, and uh, yeah, we'll be able to do more stuff. So anyway, so let's go into here, and let's get started. So we're going to make a. Well, we'll just print this out first, like we just did there. It'll produce the same effect, of course, because we we just printed it out. And we're gonna do it again. So, uh, document dot get element by ID, and then pass in the ID test, and there we go. So we'll print that out, and there it is. There's our ID test. So that's awesome. And uh, yeah, so if you want to, you could even assign it as a variable. So, or let um, test equal document and this seems kind of confusing at first but actually if you do it a lot you get really used to it document I get element by ID it's like the name is basically what is happening so it's not really easy to forget it if that makes sense and so yeah so we can't do anything with this because we didn't console to log it but if you want to console to log it we simply just do test because it's assigned to that now the value of it reload and there we go we get the same thing and so yeah so as you can tell by the name, this is how you access a DOM object by its ID. And uh, yeah, so that's an easy way. That's what most developers use. And there's actually two other ways, like I just said, um, that you can access them. And um, and what I've found is that these two other ways give you collections, HTML collections like we saw before, instead of um, just the HTML by itself. So if we try this, we can uh, check that out. So um, as this is not a te uh, te permanent variable, it's not a constant, we can just reassign it here. Um, so we'll do document.getElementById. Oops. Tag name. And so and then we pass in the tag here. So what, is, what does it mean by tag? So if we go to our HTML, uh, we can check this out and we see we have these tags. These are all tags. So let's say we want to access the p tags all of them all we got to do is pass in p oops oopsie daisy so we pass in p here and then we can print that out of course so now we get an html collection of the three p tags that we have and zero you know one two and what's be what's beautiful about this if we open this up we can see all the, of the properties that make up our dom object so as you can see here, um, it's just amazing. So if we want to change this, all we got to do is access this and, you know, change it. But um, we'll save that for later. But if you just want to explore this, go ahead. And it's really awesome. Play around with it. And, uh, yeah. So let's do the head here. Head tag. Reload. And we get a single head. We only have one head, so we just get one, of course. So zero. Because um, it's zero base. It's a index. And, uh, yeah. So that's how you do that. And uh, so the other one is test equals, remember it's done here because I set it to wrap. So if we move this out, it'll be up here. So it's just to save space anyway. So do, uh, test equals document dot get element by class name. And let's get class lit. I don't think anyone uses the word lit that much anymore because that's really cringy now. But uh, yeah. So, if we put this with a class of lit, um, it's not going to return anything because this is called class lit. So, I just noticed I messed that up. So, let's rename this to class lit. Oops. So, if we reload here, we get another collection with our class here. So, let's um, make another one. Or a couple more. And we're going to get a big collection now of five different ones. And so we can access each of these individually, which is beautiful. So yeah, really awesome. 
And let's see what happens when we don't have, or we can't find it basically. So let's change this name to something that doesn't exist on this web page and reload. And we just get, and just we get nothing. Um, but if we use ID, I think we're going to get undefined as a result, I believe. So let's do that. At, um, test equals document dot get element by ID and then blah, blah, blah. And then yeah, we get null or undefined, whatever. They're different, I think, but yeah, they are different, but yeah, same meaning, I guess. So that's how you access some of the um, DOM objects on your web page. And just remember, um, the main one you need to know is this one, dot get element by ID. Um, you could also do class name, tag name, whatever. And, uh, but yeah, so the next thing we're going to go over is like, there's some more objects, um, object methods that we can use to be able to access these uh, properties here or in our objects and all that. So I hope I didn't think that made sense, but so like we did before, document dot all, which just lists lists everything. So we get a huge collection of everything on our web page. But there's many more we could do. We could also do um, links. So oops, dot links. So it'll display all the links on your web page and we don't have any so it's not going to have anything but let's go ahead and make some and so we'll just put a bunch of tags here reload and now we have one Oop. did I do that right mm. oh I see <laughs> I'm stupid so yeah, we have a link here now, and we can look at it if we want to. Let's give it a stuff here, just some stuff here. And then we can open this up, you know, and look at the value. Let's go down. Um, so if we, if we look, oh, okay, see. So, blah, 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 blah. so if you look here, we can have the path name. We can access that. And so now we know where it's going to send the link. So that's pretty cool. And we can get the origin, the IP address, and it's that because I'm on my home computer. Get the outer HTML. Awesome. Just so much stuff. And a lot of these are null because there's nothing. Uh, yeah. Just a lot of stuff here. And so, yeah. So, again, just explore that if you want to. So, um, there's actually a lot more. So, I'll just paste these in here so you can see. So, these are the other ones we could access. I mean, there's actually more than this, too, but... These are like primary ones, if I'm thinking correctly. But enough of that. There's more. I'll just give you the link for the other ones, like every single one of them. I believe it has all of them. So I'll give you the link, and then you can look at these and play around, play around with it if you want to. So I'll put that in the description. And I'll put this one in the description. We're about to go over this right now. So, okay, so how do we access the individual properties of our objects or elements on our web page? I mean, of course, we could just, um, you know, open it up like we did and just look at them. But if we want to just print, like, have them, like, own them, basically, and, like, set them to a variable, we can do that pretty easily. So, um, we'll use this one up here. So, we'll get our RP tag that says test, you know, uh, this one right here. So, we'll, use, we'll be accessing that one. And so, if we want to access the ID, for example, like we're using, which is test, of course. We just put dot ID because it's a property, not a method. So just dot ID, reload. Now we get just test. And we could also do the other things like enter HTML. Then we get the HTML, uh, you know, just the text, I mean. And we can get um, the inner text, which is the same exact thing. Oh. Why? What? Yeah, yeah, that was weird. Um, so yeah, so that's how we can do that. We can do class name if you want to. So if there's a class, which there's not, so we're gonna get a nothing. And um, yeah, so there's a lot of these that we can access. Um, but yeah, so if you want to access like any of these, you know, here they are, and you can check them out if you want to. So let's find one, the lang attribute. I don't even know what that is. Um. Nothing, so yeah, I don't know. Oops. Um, title converts it to string, just a lot of different things we can access. 
So anyway, um, so that's how you access some of the attributes. Um, if you want to get like a full list of the attributes, I believe we can do like dot attributes, and this will return a node list of attributes. Yes, yeah, so here's a node list. Yeah, so here we are. So we get a little uh, list of these attributes we can access, I believe. Eh, I don't know. But anyway, um, so I would just use this as a reference, we'll, which again will be in this description. And so I hope you enjoy. Um, I hope you like this video. If you need help, let me know. Uh, just leave, leave a comment and I'll help you out. If you liked the video, leave a like. Um, share it with your home dogs if you have any friends. And uh, subscribe for more. I'll be posting pretty much every day like I have been and peace.